that extra gear, that first three steps, huge strides in the performance that I might not be the player I am today. Uh, all right, welcome to another episode of Behind the Gear. Um, and here I am sitting with uh, Oli Mata. And uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome Oli Mata. We started this a little while ago kind of talking NHL guys, not even NHL guys, just guys that are on that path of playing at a higher level, whether it's pro hockey, junior hockey, whatever it is, and kind of how they got there and what they're doing and basically kind of peeling back the layers and seeing what basically made up Oli Mata. How did Oli Mata become Oli Mata? Because at one point you were a little puke that was two or three years old spitting on yourself for sure, right? Like we all were. So now, you know, how does that guy become, you know, an NHL guy with a bunch of medals and a bunch of different stuff going on, you know? So we'll kind of, we'll, we'll go back a little bit, but if, uh, you know, if somebody came up to you in a crowd and said, hey, Oli, where are you from? What would you, what would you tell them? Uh, Yveskula, Finland. Just... So for, not, uh, so for an ignorant Canadian who has no idea where that is, you just be like, I'm from Finland. Be like, oh, yeah, I know where that is. Yeah, yeah. Finland, <laughs> Finland, Europe. You say the country, and then you yeah, say the continent. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So where exactly would that be in Finland? That'd be, that'd be two and a half, three hours from Helsinki. So okay. we'd, be, we'd be right in the middle of Finland. Uh, okay. We've got like about from 100 to 150,000 people. Right. Big, big university town. Yep. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice little lake, lake city, like every every yeah. Finnish city is. Good, and you, uh, you, were, you were talking about this a little while ago, but you ended up uh, buying a place out there, right, for the summer a little bit. You spent a little bit of time out there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Love, love it at home. Uh, yeah. Finally, found a good place and uh, end up buying. Obviously, it's a place I, I like to go back every summer and for sure spend time with my friends and family. So, so that was a that was a pretty big move for me. No, it's like, <laughs> like a big boy, right? <laughs> uh, so, and, uh, and I, I remember asking this question, I'm like, so uh, you, do you have a sauna? You're like, Dwayne, everybody's got a sauna in Finland. Yeah, so, yeah, it's it's crazy because every condo, you think about it, a condo building doesn't only have a sauna, every condo itself has a really? sauna nowadays. Yeah, it's that's, crazy. Eh? that's how they build it. And are so. they old school, like rock, wood saunas or are they infrared now? Are they a little bit more techy? Like uh, how is it kind of, because I've been in both and I love them both. I love saunas. Uh, but sometimes the old school ones with the wood and the fire just gets so hot. It's awesome. What kind? Like, is, is there a preference out there? It doesn't matter as long as it's I hot. mean, it's getting a little ticky now. Yeah. But I, I personally feel the best ones are the wood saunas. Yeah. But you, you can't really have those in condos. Or it's a little tough. A little condos tough. or houses, <laughs> but you can build it outside. And yeah. Usually, usually when you have a, like a cottage sauna or something like that, that's usually made wooden, like board yeah. wood. Um, but yeah. at home, at home, it's like electric. Uh, they got that infrared saunas yeah. too, and yeah. it's, it's a it's a whole new world of saunas when you go back <laughs> back to Finland. I'll tell you that. Oh no, for sure. I have a buddy. From, I'm from Sudbury, but I have a buddy of mine's Finnish, and that was one thing. Even growing up as young guys, we t- uh, when, anytime we hung out at his place, there was sauna there, sauna's cottage, sauna everywhere. It was all the time. It was, it was awesome. And growing up, what were the big sports in Finland for you? So you know, as a youngster, was it was it hockey or was it more? You know, was there a lot of soccer there or football? Was there a lot of different? Like what were what were kind of the more kind of predominant sports in Finland at the time? Well, I started playing soccer when I was three. I, okay. I never even thought of hockey. Um, I skated when I was four, but I, I was never in in any team. I was just skating around myself, like just having fun. Um, yeah. Soccer was definitely the number one sport for me, uh, and I loved it. Obviously, it's big in Europe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the second but we did everything pretty much. Like yeah. Playing from well, at that young, that level, like playing from badminton to yeah. tennis, like you'd have volleyball, you'd have... Uh, baseball, Finnish baseball. That's yeah, that's yeah. another story. We can't really dig in there. That's <laughs> going to take, take another half an hour for me to explain that one. Yeah. Um, so all kinds, all kinds of sports. Uh, hockey. I didn't. I didn't start playing hockey until I was six and a half. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, I just wanted to get on get on a team. I have, I have a good story about it. But I just I was just watching guys like older and two years older than me playing hockey, and I was. I was watching him play. I was getting so jealous. I started crying to my mom, like, like why am I not out there? Yeah, why, yeah. why are these guys having so much fun? I'm playing soccer and whatever stupid sports. I can't play <laughs> hockey. <laughs> so then what happened? Mom and, mom and dad kind of pack you up and, and, and kind of get you going? Little sidebar here. Oli is a tremendously hard worker, but Oli also <laughs> loves to sweat. This is going to be awesome. This is great. It's gonna be. It's going to be tough. I'm going to need a... <laughs> <laughs> a couple of bottles of water after this. It's <laughs> called hard work, bud. Called yeah. hard work. <laughs> yeah, well, at least it looks like it. You can fake it pretty good. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so you're like, was it like, yeah? So you went to your mom and dad, like, what's going on here? Your mom, like, what's going on? And then what happened after that? Kind of they they allow you to play, or did it take a little bit, of, a lot of a lot of schmoozing to get that to happen? No, I kind of I got I got out there pretty quick. Yeah, uh, that that happened. We got went to shop. We went shopping, like old gear, but like used used stuff and yeah. 
uh, got it, everything everything used. I know a couple of a couple of boys on my streets. I'm still friends with. Like I got their old gear. And, <laughs> and it, it happened in a week, I think. I oh, really? Got, that yeah, quick? I got, eh? Yeah, I got back out there. Yeah, and it, it was fun. That's awesome, man. So now, do you have to bring back like new gear for the boys that you got stole their gear from? You got to bring all your NHL stuff back and give it back to them. Well, they haven't reminded me about it yet, but <laughs> I don't. I don't think they even remember. I think it's more of their parents. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then, so when like when you started actually playing organized hockey, did you just fall in love with it? Was that kind of the the beginning of the end for you? And just kind of six years old, and that was it. You just fell in love with it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was, it was. I still loved every other sport too. Yeah. Like I I, I love playing soccer. I love playing base, finish baseball. Um, I I love hockey. I didn't really have have a choice. I never, not until I was fourteen. I never really had a choice what sport I wanted to play. Okay. I, I was playing I was playing it all. I was doing it all. Uh, and it was all was it all mostly through school or was it all kind of club stuff that you guys were doing after school and weekends and stuff like that or you it, know? It's club stuff. It was Every, okay. everything goes through a club. So okay. let's say let's say the London Knights. Yeah. Like they have their own own system, own yeah. junior A, junior B, so under twenty, under eighteen, under yeah. seventeen, sixteen. And they're bring their own players up. When they bring their players up, obviously they wanna they want to keep them. So everything's so. like that in Finland, right? Yeah, like for every soccer single sport. There's has their no own, university Their own funnel to bring kids from young ages all the way up to their highest level if they can make that. Yes. Okay. Yes, there's no university sports. Like yeah. There's no junior programs. There's not... Every uh, every, every junior program goes through a the, team. Yeah, okay. Like a higher team yeah. that plays in a, in, a, in a men's league or something. Yeah, no, it's interesting. And then what about like uh, high school in Finland? I know you kind of left to play junior stuff like that, but high school in Finland would... Would you have high school sports or at all club sports? It's all club it sports. It is. So you went to high school, did your schooling, and then after that you went and did and then play your club sports after that, right? Yeah. Well, I, I got a good spot. They started at, at the time when I uh, I went to first of all when I was grade seven to nine. That that was the time they started doing schools were t- trying to work with the club teams yeah, to right. actually yeah. start bringing more students athletics. To school, yeah. 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 And and uh, I was in a good good schools. I had good teachers, so they. They'll let me to go to ice in the mornings, let's say from seven to eight, and then I'll I'd be late for about fifteen minutes my first class, but that that was okay. I just had to do some extra yeah. extra work yeah. work after it. But I'd be fine with that since I got to go on the ice and they'd be they'd be okay with it. And then I finally went to high school day. We had three times a week we had a morning actually putting in a uh, school calendar. Oh like wow! We'd have a yeah, two okay. hour window yeah. in our uh, calendar every three times a day that we had like a morning practice and that would be through the club team. So three times a week you're allowed to basically, yeah. that was part of your curriculum, like part yeah. of your school, and right? I would, I would get a credit for it. Yeah, see, yeah. we are just starting to do that in London, believe it or not. Like we, we ran a private school here, which I know, you know, that's common everywhere where you have a private school and you basically, you go to school, have hockey, work out, all that stuff. But we're just starting to implement a program now called ASA that's going to have that, where one of your courses at school is going to be hockey or gymnastics or whatever you're, you know, and, and you have to be elite. So I mean, yeah. all you guys had to be elite, I'm sure, or part of that club, right? Uh, but I think it's such a nice thing for you. And, and a lot of these athletes, whether it's rugby, baseball, it doesn't matter, but extra motivation to have that hockey or that piece of sport in that school you know what I mean? As part of your curriculum, and, yeah, and, and I, I think the big thing about it is just bringing when you want to bring players up, you want to you, yeah. you want to produce elite yeah. athletes. I think that's a huge thing. Just get, getting more hours of work. Yeah, usually those morning morning skates or whatever hours of work we got in the morning, they wouldn't be too hard. Yeah, we still have the practice at night. Yeah, that'll be more of a skill stuff, and we yeah. have good hour and a half of like skill work. Yeah, that'd right. Three hours, three three times a week, which would be. Pretty, pretty big. Yeah, no, that's a, that, and that's such a help, right? Especially for, and you know, you talk about you start at six. I mean, here in Canada, I mean, pe- people are are crazy if you didn't start at three. And I've heard parents say like, oh, you know, why well, my kid starts at five? Well, you missed the boat. Like, what boat did you miss? <laughs> I started at nine, and I was kind of like you. I didn't really care about it. I played a lot of other sports, whatever. And then I found hockey. Moved in a neighborhood, a bunch of guys playing street hockey. Started playing with them. Mom, dad, I want to play. Like, dad grabbed us both. My brother and I went to play it again. Sports got a bunch of used gear. You know, and then I fell in love with it. But I think at six, seven, eight, nine, you're older, you're more athletic, you're a little bit smarter, obviously, than a three, four year old, right? Yeah. And you pick it up a little bit quicker. And I think for a lot of these young players that are starting late, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, even, um, if you get the right instruction and you get a chance to do like you know, you're you were athletic clearly. Mm-hmm. So then now you pick up hockey and you kinda you know, go with that. I mean, I think I don't I don't think there's ever a time that that's too late. I think if you're six, seven, eight, nine and you love it and you wanna get extra help and you wanna get there's a lot of opportunity out there to become an elite player even if you get if you know if you're a little bit late starting at it you know yeah i'm i'm with you with that i, I yeah. think i think more so just trying 
more so important is doing like doing stuff versus yeah. getting out there and playing different sports. I think that's how you build your athleticism. Yeah, and for if sure. you're if you're a good athlete, I think it's it's not hard to pick up hockey either. Yeah. Like obviously it's not the easiest sport to do, but like it's not. Yeah. At the later ages, I think you're you're still going to be fine. Just, yeah. You know, just try different things and try what the. I think the big thing was for me, like I th- I think I developed a lot better understanding of different games and it helped me in hockey too just to seeing seeing, For sure, seeing, the yeah. seeing seeing the ice yeah. better stuff yeah. like that playing different sports oh definitely even the whole athleticism piece like using your feet using your hands being able to move around you know what i mean like i think all that stuff is is huge, huge for uh, for athletes in general. You know, there's uh, no doubt about it. You need a fan here, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you coming from? Do you just work out? Yeah, yeah. yeah so you're just yeah, you're still leaking. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, which is very nice. You just skated and then you grabbed lunch and then popped in here. So we definitely really appreciate that. Um, and then, like looking back on, I guess who who are, who are the biggest uh, like who is your surrounding crew as far as you know who kind of pushed you or motivated you to get into so much sports? First of all, like did you have brothers, sisters, your parents that were kind of you know influencing you on that? And then kind of who who helped you push a little bit more with hockey or that one sport that you kind of found that you loved? You know. Um. Well, like I said, like we did, it. I had two older brothers, so okay. everybody, all of us just wanted to move and play different sports. Like yeah. we had, my oldest brother was big on, well, he played hockey too, but he was big on soccer as well. He was big on Finnish baseball, yeah. uh, tennis. Uh, second oldest, water polo. He he used to be a water polo player. He was big, big on soccer too. And it just, I think it just came down from our, from our parents. They, they wanted to do, they were sporty. They were athletic too. So yeah. they wanted to do all kinds of sport. I and mean, growing up, like we, we had a good group of guys in our neighborhood that like, I feel like every day we had some kind of game going. Yeah, like, right. it, it, it wasn't always hockey, but yeah. street hockey it could be soccer, anything. Yeah. Like we always, we always got like 10, 10 kids playing. Yeah, and it's and awesome. All, all different kinds. And I think that's, that's how it picked up. So I, I think through, through my brothers, through my, through my parents for sure. But I think just having that community yeah. where, where everybody, like, I, we we're still, we we're still hanging around with the same, yeah, same awesome. guys back home. Yeah, and, that's uh, great. And, uh, remember the good old days. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Play. But I think that was, that was a big thing. Just, just fall in love with, with sports. And, yeah. uh, um, I don't, ho- hockey, I don't, I don't know how I, I really picked it up that quick. And, but I definitely have my friend's dad was a, my first coach. Okay. And uh, he he was a really big influence on me. He was a he was a really good guy and good good coach for yeah for for that old that young and um, I think he he got me real interested about sports. I think yeah that, that's really big at that age. Like he didn't he didn't kill the sport for me. It yeah was right. Every, made it fun. Yeah, yeah made it fun. You want to you want always go out there and just, yeah. just have fun and yeah we had we had we had good and bad days but it just felt like just going out there like it was always fun yeah which is awesome and having the, those other peer guys around you like buddies that love hockey that love baseball soccer it's it's always nice when you can pick up the phone and, and in five minutes you've got 10 guys there to play a road hockey game or go and play soccer you know what i mean which is always a and i think a lot of times we lack that in certain communities right there's not like you drive through some communities now i i give you 100 bucks if you can find three road hockey games going on you know, and back when I grew up, there would be road hockey games all year round, all the time. Winter, summer, spring, fall, you know. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that. <laughs> well, I know what happened. It's called Fortnite. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> no, but, you know, video games, other things, you yeah. know, it's, it's... Well, I found that even nowadays when I go back home, we're trying to get, we're trying to get some games going. Like, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. We, we it's... barely get one game a week. Like, yeah. It's the same. Like, we still have a lot of, a lot of guys the same age. Like, yeah. You, you know, at that point, like, want, actually want to do it, but yeah. just, everybody's on different... Yeah, I know for sure. Else, so it's tough to set up anything. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, and then, so moving forward, you know, you got into hockey, obviously, and got you know be- better and better, and better at it. And at what age were you kind of identified as a young guy who maybe has an opportunity to play junior, kind of move up to that next level from that club system to that you know kind of the, the big club or the junior club before you know kind of the U18s type thing? But kind of that you know that 15, 16 year old age. Uh, how did that process happen where you got an opportunity to, you know, you were identified as one of those guys that, man, he, he can play and he might have some potential here? Yeah, um, I think 14, 15, I was still playing soccer, finished baseball, and hockey. So um, during winter time, it was all hockey. That was my main thing. Yeah. And when summer came, I think I, I dropped soccer first. That was, that was when I was 14. I dropped soccer first. So during the summertime, we had, we had summer training through our uh, – Hockey, right. hockey team. Yeah. But if we had baseball games, like I, I've talked to the hockey coaches, and it was okay with them to me going and playing baseball yeah. at the same time. But that was that was kind of the time I was, uh, 
I kind of had to choose when I was 15. Yeah. If I wanted to play, finish baseball, do I want to play hockey? And uh, I, th- I think at that point, just following how big hockey was in Finland, I think that just got me. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, when I was 15, I think I think that was a point when they started recruiting for the under-16 okay, team yeah, in right. Finland. And, yeah. and, uh, Which is I, a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it is a big deal. There's yeah. a couple of pre-camps before the actual yeah. camp that makes – Makes the first under sixteen team, yeah. team Finland, and uh, I, ended, I ended up making it. So by that point, I was uh, that probably had a pretty big influence on For me sure. that I might have a chance to actually make a make a living out of this. And that kind of put you on the radar. And I mean, g- growing up as a young guy in Finland, who were some of the the NHLers or the pro guys at that time that you looked up to that were making a living playing hockey? And you know, for a lot of you and your buddies and the young kids that are coming up. I'm sure there was guys in, in, you know, coming back to Finland or that were playing in pro hockey there or playing in in, uh, in the NHL. But were there certain guys who were just like, man, I want to be that guy one day? Well, Solani was big. Yeah. But I, I really never wanted to be Solani. So I, yeah, at yeah. that point, I was, yeah. I, I was a D-man. Like <laughs> right. I, I think I've played my position for two years now. Right, so okay. I, I definitely was a D-man. I, I used to growing up watching Lidstrom and uh, yeah. Elman. And we had every, every, I think one Sunday every month, we had a – we had a replay of NHL game. No way, really? <laughs> we, you know, I remember it was, it, was, it was like 2 o'clock or 12 o'clock afternoon, and we had the whole family just stopped everything and just watched no this way. one replay. It wasn't a live game. <laughs> it, was, it was a replay yeah. coming out of last That's night, awesome. and we got it once a month, and we had really? the whole, whole family stop, stop everything and watch the game. Yeah. And, and that, that was pretty funny when I think back of it. And obviously when you watch the, t- watch the TV now, like, you can actually see the puck back in the days. You can see yeah, the yeah. puck. Like, yeah, guess, exactly. You know, if you yeah. don't have HD, it looks like, yeah. it looks like crap, right? Yeah, for, oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, and then you said you actually have two older brothers. How much older were your brothers than you? Um, two years and five years. Okay. So, not, so did you guys much. hang out a little bit growing up as far as playing sports and, and things like that? And were you kind of always the whipping boy? Were you the one that just got his, his ass handed to him all the time? Or, or, or were they pretty good? Yeah. Um, I, I think back in a, when I was back when I was younger, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But when we grew up, we kind of, everybody had their own sports after, right. after that. So yeah. so we all had our own uh, group of friends who we, who we played right, with and yeah. were playing with. But yeah, back in the... Back in under under ten, I think yeah, I got, I got <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, you're a pretty tough kid. Yeah. Eh? You're that younger brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've all got a couple of buddies with those, or or you know, personally, I have a younger brother as well. So yeah, see, so you got to put him in that once in a while. You got to throw balls at him. And yeah, the thing yeah. is, I was I was usually the youngest on every game too. Uh, <laughs> right. until, yeah, so that's it was never easy. They, no, like. Even even if one, I remember one time we were playing we were playing street hockey and they wanted to play do the power play this imitate power play <laughs> these guys put me right in front of the net <laughs> you're, you're you're the net front guy yeah net front guy they would not like they're taking they're taking one timer yeah. off, off the blue line I'm standing right in front of the net no gear nothing that's <laughs> amazing like yeah yeah just be right there and screen the goalie like, oh okay <laughs> yeah Solani right Solani does this <laughs> yeah. no he doesn't <laughs> that's great. Yeah, the younger brother. It's the best, man. It's the best. Uh, so then after, so then you, you, you kind of go through that U15 process, get identified on Team Finland, which is huge. And then uh, moving forward, you would have played a year of junior, or two years of junior in Finland before coming over to North America after that, right? Yeah. And then, so the European draft is a year after the OHL draft, so you're a year older. And what was it like getting drafted to London? Did you, did you know a lot about the OHL at the time, or were you kind of... Okay, they're gonna you're gonna go in this draft. Okay, and kind of was it up in the air a bit, or, or did you have a pretty good under, idea of what was gonna happen? I honestly, at that point, like I, CHL was kind of out there, but yeah. like I had no real clue. Like any teams that played there, I know there's like one or two Finnish guys that actually played in the CHL. Right. Um, and, and that that year, I kind of broke through a bit. Yeah. And back back home, and uh, I ended up doing. I ended up doing kind of a handshake deal with my uh, my club team at that that point, and uh, that I'd be playing with them for for a year. Okay. For a year or two or three years, and yeah. uh, sticking with them, I, I had no no clue that I wouldn't even move anywhere. Right. Um, but uh, I remember my agent, who, who I got, had a had a good idea about it. Uh, I, th- I think the biggest influence was there was so back home we had we had our men's league team that would be the first league. That's a pro team, right? Yeah. yeah. And in that system, we also had a second league team. Okay. That would be pro team too, yeah. but they they'd be in second league, and then we had the under twenties. Okay. So I'd be uh, that year. I already played half a year in the uh, the second men's league team, and then half a year in the under twenties. Okay. And. Uh, 
I went looking at the roster and thinking about the chances. Like I don't, I don't think that year I would have played in the actual men's league team. Right. So I had a chance. My agent said I had a chance to come over and play junior hockey. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of, I, I just kind of took it. I, I, we we talked about it. Just go one year and then see what happens. Yeah. See yeah. what happens. Go back home. Maybe then you can. You're old enough. You you're good enough to play in the play in the men's league. But I think that was, that was a big big influence. It, definitely, my agent brought it up, and uh, I'm pretty thankful he did. Yeah. I, I, had, <laughs> I had such I had such a good time back yeah. here. It's funny because in, in in Europe, you know, with a little bit of different terminology on stuff. But like you call you call it a men's league. Like yeah, I was going to play in the men's league, which means that I was going to play with the men. Yeah. But here, you know, you say yeah, I'm going to play in the men's league. We think you're oh, he's going to go back play in the beer league with his buddies and have beers and showers <laughs> after the game, right? Like no. Uh, but yeah, should, should I say elite league or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that a, league's legit though, man. Yeah. That, that finish league's awesome. But what I'm getting at is, for you in your hometown, it's like. Like if you get to that men's league or that pro league, that's pretty legit in your area, right? Like that's like you've kind of made it. And then all of a sudden this happens with the draft and the OHL and your agent says, you know what, you got a chance to go to North America, which is a far way away. Not really knowing what's what's you know at the end of it, but you know, can you imagine you just said, I'm good, I'm gonna stay here. Been probably, you know, a superstar back there and played a bunch of years in, in Finland, but maybe miss out on this other whole opportunity that you know you really had no idea about. But then all of a sudden you come here, so now you get drafted. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad I did it, but I, I gotta be honest. I I don't think there was a moment ever after bringing it up like I was not gonna go. Yeah, yeah. I, right away when it, when they brought it up, I was thinking about playing in Canada and like they told all told me all about it. Like it, it, it's yeah, gonna be a good idea. league. Yeah. And you, it's gonna be a good time. You're gonna be playing with the with people your same age yeah. as you, and you you you're gonna make friends and stuff. So it's yeah. Just what? living somewhere else, just experience. Like yeah. it, it might be that I never get a chance to move out, yeah. like move to Canada, experience it. So I think that that was something that really pushed me to it. No, it's all yeah, totally. And uh, but which is amazing. It, it says a lot about your character too. I mean, I've had to, I gotten a chance to know you a lot, of, like for a lot of years now. And I'm um, you're you're the type of guy that you don't give a shit. You have a goal, and I got to move to Iceland. Okay, I'll move to Iceland. I got to move yeah. to Alaska. Okay, I'll move. you know what I mean. It's just whatever I got to do to get to that to get to get to that spot. How was your family? Like your brothers, just or your brothers and your parents? How were they when this whole thing came up? And then you get drafted. To London now you're moving to London Ontario not London England London Ontario and you're like okay uh, I'm leaving which you're probably fine with but how are how how is the rest of the family with all that because that's you know here we talk about oh I'm gonna move three three hours down the highway and it's a tough one right and now you're moving you know across the ocean basically so what was that like on your family well they were they were actually pushing me and they were with me the whole time but I don't think it, it was definitely easy they yeah. they made it look like it was it was an easy choice. They yeah. they were with me about like just moving and moving over and maybe being here and just experiencing what it's like. Yeah. Uh, but I don't. I really by the point I left, I don't think it was that that easy. <laughs> <laughs> when they actually dropped you off the airport, like, yeah. oh no, <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Where is he going again? Uh, and then so then you land in London. You get to London. Uh, what, what was your first kind of? Because that was probably your, was that your first time in Canada, or have you been over with some international stuff a little bit? Probably not really with any junior. Like you probably didn't travel yeah, that far with think, any of that. I don't. I don't think so. I I was in LA for the my agency camp. That was okay. I think that might have been the first time I've been in the US. Yeah. So when you got when you landed uh, London and Canada stuff, what was it? Uh, what was your kind of first impression? Is there anything that kind of stood uh, well, out? Well, I remember. As, like, I remember a this trip this actually. Um, I was in Lake Placid for the under twenties tournament. Okay. And uh, Dale and Misha Donsko yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, Mish, yeah. picked me up. Like the team bus leaves the airport, and uh, Mish, Mish and Dale uh, comes in, and I hop into this big. I and you had already been drafted at that point, right? Yeah. So this yeah. is gonna be your so, first. So first I knew, year. I yeah. knew I'm going there. So yeah. I never met, I never met Dale and Misha. Yeah. And I hop, hop in a car with them. I've spent eight hours. <laughs> so you got to know them real well. <laughs> eight hours. I can't, I can't remember a thing we we talked about. Yeah. I don't think we talked a lot. Yeah. At, the, at that point, my English wasn't that good. Like, yeah, I, yeah. Could, I could understand things, but I had, I had a tough time, yeah. tough time speaking it. <laughs> but, and I end up, I end up just dropped off to my billets. And I, I remember the first time I got dropped off to my billets. I, I didn't know these people, right? They're yeah. like I just a random house. So I got you got you got basically your your bags, yeah. <laughs> yeah. your hockey bag. Like hey, how I you got doing? my bag, and they told me I got my room upstairs. So I'm going up to my room and put some finished show on just. <laughs> <laughs> just to recover all the English they've been talking to me the whole time. Yeah. And they, I got a funny story. I'm a big eater. I, I think you know that. Oh, right? yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. I eat a lot. And uh, my bill at deck keeps telling this story every time. Like, he's, he's got a chance to say somebody who hasn't heard it yet. 
but first time, first night, like I, I haven't eaten that that much yeah. that day, and then going out to Eastside Mario's and ask me if I want to go. Like, are you hungry? I'm like, I'm, I'm a little bit. So I didn't, I didn't want to say I'm starving because I'm trying first to make, day, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, you know, trying to make a first impression yeah. there. And I'm, yeah, a little bit. So we ended up going to Eastside Mario's, and it was me, and me, the two boys, and uh, Rich and Natalie. Okay. So I'm ordering my own like appetizer salad, and then I think pasta for dinner, and the amount of food I ended up eating. It was like, it's surreal. And these guys just kept, like, they just kept watching, like, like who, 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 who did we just get? Like, yeah. This guy, this guy, this guy yeah. eats everything. I ended up crushing, like, half a pizza, like, half, half a pound of wings. Whatever's like, oh, left over, you're just what, crushing whatever, it. Whatever, yeah. like, anybody had something over, it's like, they just put yeah. it to me. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, take it. Yeah. Take After a while, it, it just becomes yeah. a game. Eh? You just push it over to Oli, see if he'll eat yeah. it. And yeah. And I remember, I remember after dinner, everybody's kind of, Relaxed and you know you you had the you had the kind of a relaxed moment when you full and everything and my belly tight goes oh good thing you weren't hungry huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were they were probably like oh man this guy's gonna cost us so much money in food yeah I probably freaked them out a bit in yeah <laughs> yeah you know it's funny um, and I mean that that's a big part of moving like that is having a good billet family right and obviously you got you got lucky you got a really good family that uh, you know obviously and you still keep in touch with them I think when you come back all the time right yeah they moved yeah. away right they're no no they're they're still, still here they're okay. still here um, yeah I mean I was I was really lucky yeah um, I think we get we get along really well uh, they're they're awesome people they're, it's a huge thanks to them that just how well I fit it. In London, I think that they play a huge part of it. Oh man, and I—I I, I mean, I had a chance to billet, and I had unbelievable billets. And I think that transition, because I mean, when you first got to uh, to London, and let's say the first couple of weeks, you know, you had to have had a little bit of homesickness there, and just thinking about what your buddies are doing, they're probably playing, you know, finish baseball, and they're on the ice, and you're just like, man, you kind of sit there stewing a bit, like, man, did I make a good decision or wrong decision? In the back of your mind, I know you know that this is where you should be, but. And it must have been hard those first couple of weeks of just, you know, anytime you had a minute or two to think, you're just like, oh, man, my buddies or my parents or my brothers or. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't easy for yeah. sure. I mean, it just, I remember just when you've been done with the day and you have kind of everything calms down. And then, like you said, you had a little time to think. It wasn't wasn't easy. I, And by the point I got home, like, everything calmed down. It was night at home, so I couldn't have, I really right. had nobody to call. Yeah, right. It was like 6 o'clock here. It's 1 o'clock back home. Yeah. So, that w- that wasn't easy, especially the first couple of months with the language too. I remember, I remember one of the bigger things was I got so sick of talking English and listening to English the whole time. I couldn't I, I couldn't wait to go home and just put on like a Finnish movie or like put on some <laughs> Finnish music or yeah, something, yeah. read a Finnish book or anything. Yeah. Anything that didn't have any English on it. Because you went from Finnish to just 100% English. Exactly. And, yeah, that's a tough one for exactly. sure. Exactly. But you pick it up pretty quick yeah. though. Yeah, well, I mean, your English is great. But yeah, I, I, I can't imagine, you know, and... I, I speak French as well, and which is great. But it, when, anytime we go to like Quebec or like that with friends that don't speak French, it's just like, and I can't imagine being in another country where I don't know the language, you know. And, and I've traveled, so you go to Italy and you're looking at menus, and you're like, holy smokes, yeah. man! And you're coming here, and now you're this is where you're gonna live. So you got to sink or swim. You gotta you gotta figure this this language out and the reading and the writing and everything, you know. And I'm sure you can read and write well, but it's the whole dialect and the slang and the little things that people are saying. Like That was the big thing. The slang was huge. Yeah. Um, Especially locker room yeah. stuff, right? Like around exactly. the room. Exactly. Like, what? It's, what it's do you want? Different. <laughs> yeah, it's it's different. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Um, and then going to the play, like how, how did you find the kind of the finish, the, the, the European style of play compared to the North American when you started playing? Did you find it was an easy transition or did you find a way, was there things like more contact or the ice is smaller, obviously, was it less time and space? What were some of the things that popped out at you that, man, I got I to gotta figure this out? Well, I think just quick turns and um, back home, you didn't really, really want to stop. Like okay. big guys, you didn't really want to stop. Like yeah. You kind of wanted to keep your speed the whole time. Obviously, there was moments you had to, but... Yeah. Most of the time, you didn't want to turn or stop. You just want to keep your speed. And here, it's more straight up. You want to stop and start quick. You want to qu- turn quick. Everything yeah. pivot quick. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the biggest thing I struggled with is going back for pucks. I and mean, I w- end up making a first play or make, make my pass. I, I kept watching and it kept gliding. And I, I got crushed so <laughs> many times right after I, I got – I made my yeah. pass, just crushed, and like Dale and Mark was all over me about it. Like, holy, like, 
what are you what are you doing like turn do something <laughs> get away turn, yeah. like, get away and we we started working on that the whole time like they they showed me stuff and they talked to me the whole time yeah like you got you gotta turn like you, you gotta know there's a guy coming it's not europe anymore and yeah that was, yeah, yeah, that yeah, was totally. the biggest thing that, that yeah. probably I, I had to learn yeah. that's was, funny though because you're right like you have time and in, in europe you're not going to go five strides to hit a guy so if you get out of the corner quick make a pass you got a little bit of se- a couple seconds to kind of Re, re, recalibrate, I guess. Whereas here, you're right. Now it's one steam bolt, two steam bolt. They're gonna hit, and exactly. especially back. You know, when you first started, there's even more contact than there is now. So definitely, mm-hmm. and I'm sure other teams got to know that and just love teeing off on you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure they love it, especially <laughs> yeah. the big guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then, so that first year, obviously a bit of an adjustment. You had a you know a very good year, and 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 I mean, you were a highly touted guy coming in, which was nice. So you played some good minutes, and you guys obviously had a good year that year, and and made a bit of a run at the end of the year in the playoffs, and then. Ended up going to going to the Memorial Cup. So, was there a lot more hockey played that year? Like, how was that on your body? Were you pretty good with it? Were you pretty, you know, felt pretty, you know, fine all year? Or did you find it a little more taxing? Because I mean, really, when you end up making a run to the Memorial Cup, you're playing almost 100 games, right? So it's that's a long season. How that feel on the on on a young, you know, a 17 year old body? I actually I actually didn't feel that bad. I I know the last season I played, I played with the under. Under 17s, 18s, and then under 20s of Team Finland too, plus the right. two club teams. So I, I think I got a, up to like 100, 500. Okay, so you would, yeah, too. So it. that that wasn't a big yeah. thing. I, I think it's just the wear and tear you had from the games when taking so many hits, especially <laughs> yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. But, but uh, when you get a, you, you know, when you get a playoff time, like that was just fun. Yeah. Like, that just, you, yeah. you just go. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's awesome. not like, you don't even think about being tired or anything. I yeah. just remember going, going to NHL combine after that. Uh, right. I, I was right after, it was yeah. right after me, the Mem Cup and it was three days and I was just out of shape. Yeah. I like, all we've done is played for. Yeah. What is it? Ten months or yeah. nine, nine months and so many games. Like you haven't really worked out or anything. And these, you look at these other guys, like they're just wrecked and you know yeah. like they yeah. they look they look good i remember not like not looking good at all <laughs> um, but i <laughs> well, felt pretty bad actually it's funny because uh when teams go on long runs like that like you only have four or five teams at the Memorial cup right so uh those are the those, all the all the drop picks off those teams are the ones that are going to suffer a bit because they had a long season because you're not doing pull-ups you're not doing squats you're not doing bench you're not doing the wind gate right on that big run whereas a lot of these guys get knocked out in you know uh, let's say march april right they're working out may June, getting ready for that combine, yeah. and they've got a bit of a leg up. But at the same time, you know, you showed really well, obviously, and you know, you're and they're the scouts and agents and everyone, or the scouts, I should say, and GMs are more interested in your play than how many pull-ups you can do on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, I, 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 mean? so, I think they understand that too. Yeah, like they're sure. obviously they have the best of the best uh, working yeah. working in that league, so they they definitely know what's about. Yeah, but you're right. You probably look like a wet rat. Yeah, I think it's more more about just me and <laughs> yeah. me how I felt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're not really a guy who likes to be unprepared. <laughs> no. Really, right? Like you're always prepared. You're always you always make sure you're ready for the season and things like that. And I think yeah, when you go into something like that, you're like holy crap, I feel like shit. And yeah. how am I going to get through I this? Know, I don't think I could do a pull-up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are the uh, the hard, one of the hard things we talked to a couple of the other guys about this one of the hardest things with the combine is the interview process and how many teams you guys have to talk to and you know team after team and and some of the it was funny some of the stories that came out but what was that interview process like for you being one year into canada obviously english obviously got a lot better by the end of the year but then what was that what was the whole interview process when you're meeting with all these gms and coaches which again 24 months ago was a totally different thing for you th- not even thinking about the nhl now you're sitting in front of probably i'm going to assume you interviewed with at least 15 to 25 teams yeah, it was it was up there. Yeah. I, I can't remember the exact number, but there was a lot. But I think it was kind of monotonous. Like I kept saying the same thing, same <laughs> yeah. thing pretty much. And yeah, um, I don't really have a funny. I don't. I really don't have a no. funny story about it. Like I had nothing. Nothing was really asked. Like nothing anything too else. crazy. It, was, eh? it felt like it was always the same. Yeah. Same thing. I kept saying the same things too. It's yeah. Like, and I think you know, like it's almost like practice. You could yeah. really get a piece of what you what this guy actually is about yeah and i I think too for for sometimes with a little bit of a language barrier too you're going to get a lot of the same just standard easy questions right which is kind of yeah you 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 prepare for it like obviously i went through my agent what i want to say and stuff like that so it's I, I think it would be way better if you actually got somehow i don't know how how it worked but you got somehow know the actual personality better yeah yeah, yeah. for sure it's hard in a 10 minute yeah. interview you're just kind of sitting there and, and then you're pretty nervous you yeah. go you go in front of like 10 pretty high up yeah high up people for in sure. nhl pro, nhl clubs and yeah. so it's not 
Yeah. It's not, a, not an easy moment for no, a young guy like that. No, totally. And then if we kind of fast forward a bit to that NHL draft, uh, you know, now all, you know, you're kind of touted as one of the top 100 skaters. And then, you know, now you're kind of thinking probably hopefully first round, maybe second round, which is amazing, you know, kind of a higher pick now. Um, so what was that whole process like? Number one, did you come to the draft? Were you physically at the draft for that year? Yeah. And yeah, did your I family come draft. over as well? Yeah, my family, actually my bullet family too. When oh, we good. about how close we are. Yeah, that's they, awesome. They came too. So, and it was a funny thing. It was in Pittsburgh, actually. That was, that no was way. Cool. Yeah, that oh, was so you got cool. a big, like, big, big, big uh, standing O from the fans probably. Yeah, it was kind of, the whole day was kind of blur. I yeah. can't pick out one, like, one moment I yeah. had there, but it was kind of cool. Oh, that's cool. And you would have been sweating like crazy. <laughs> 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 what makes you think that, huh? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. That's what I heard. So did you, like, just every couple hours just go change your suit? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty much had the wipes going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, and a lot of guys say this. Like, you kind of wait. Now, did you kind of know? Obviously, you didn't know you're going to go to Pittsburgh, but did you have an idea, kind of numbers on where you're going to be? So, what I'm getting at is, let's say you thought you're going to be at number 19. Well, when 19 showed up and passed, and then it went to 20, and then you know, how was it like just kind of waiting? Yeah, I was thought it, I thought yeah. I'd be anywhere up from 10 to 10 to like first round yeah that's that's what i thought of where yeah. i would be that's where i heard i might might be so it's just it's pretty nerve-wracking just for sure every time a team comes in it's yeah. just the player they get and it's like oh god like, yeah is it, where am i gonna go like what's gonna happen yeah and, so, and like it tends not a big deal okay no no and then like 15 you're like yeah. 17 like are you serious oh. 20 you're like what the hell? i'm not getting drafted today <laughs> yeah and then you then you start remembering how bad you looked in the combine you're like oh god <laughs> yeah that's the reason yeah yeah uh, and then 22 comes or, you know, and then you get, then you get picked. And obviously I think from that point on, it's probably just like everything's so fast, right? Like, and just as far as getting picked and then walking down, getting your Jersey, going up on stage. And it's just kind of, like you said, it's the big blur as far as going through that whole, you know, that whole process, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm already going on stage. Like I can't remember much about yeah. it, taking those pictures. I've obviously, I obviously seen the video of it. So it's kind of cool remembering for that sure, way. Yeah. But yeah, I honestly like in person, I can't, really remember that much i got i remember going to the locker room like that was pretty cool right because you're right there yeah yeah cool. i got the tour of that and actually met mario and got, oh, got nice. up to their suite there yeah. like met, met some people so yeah. it was it was kind of cool experience that's that pretty way neat. that's amazing man especially being their first pick that year is, is awesome right for sure um and then what was it like going to your first uh like your first pro camp so when you got to and i know you had development camp which is always fun it's you know it's a long long week and long days and stuff but you had all the young guys there but when you got to that first rookie camp and then you know main camp what was that like for you you know being again a, a you know, young finnish boy looking at that men's team and that pro league you know looking mm -hmm. at that and now all of a sudden you're actually at a nhl you know camp uh with these other pro guys there i think i think what pittsburgh did well is uh at least a rookie camp because that was a lockout year my first oh, uh, right. yeah uh, first actual main camp so we we didn't end up going anywhere uh we stayed in london but um the rookie camp with pittsburgh as well i think they they more want to prepare the players and they make it clear that we want to prepare the players to be NHL pl players. Yeah. So they don't, they actually don't, it's not about like making them in a pressure situations or yeah. any, anything like that. They want to give you the tools and keys to actually like, what do you got to do to actually be in NHL? So yeah. it was more about that. And, and, uh, I think, I think it was pretty smartly done, uh, yeah. for those guys. I remember on the ice, it was just tools and tools and stuff. What do you wanted to do? What, and it, what would it require, require you to be an NHL yeah. player? So um, I was thinking that rookie camp just gave me a lot out of it. Yeah, so like a lot more learning, a lot more teaching, a lot more skill stuff probably, right? Yeah. What translates to that level and, and what, you know, what are what are some of the, as a D-man and even growing up for you, what are some of the main, like, you know, if you look back right now and you said, you know what, I'm now I'm at, an NH, I'm at an NHL pro camp. Man, if I could go back to my 10, 11, 12, 13 year old self and say, hey, make sure you focus on these two things or three things. And it could be, be a better guy, don't piss your coach off, or skill stuff as far as skating or shooting or whatever. But is there anything that stands out to you that, like, if I had just focused on this a little bit more, I'd be more prepared for my opportunity here? You know, is there anything that kind of stands out that, that you feel that, you know, that, that could have helped translate a little bit if you worked on a little bit as a, as a younger guy? Oh, that, that's tough to say. Because players are so much different. I yeah. just remember my first, <laughs> the rookie camp, what, what we worked on is just not crossing over too many times. Those are a couple yeah. really simple things. Yeah. Not crossing over too many times. And whenever you go back for a puck, like checking your shoulders. Yeah, right. Simple. Like that right? that, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was a huge thing. They paid attention every time. If you didn't check your shoulders, they'd be on you. Yeah. So that's something they gave, yeah. gave out of it. And uh, one thing is going neutral zone when you 
when you're doing a kind of regroup, regroup or something, having your toes up the whole time so you see yeah. the ice. Yeah. Those Never, like three yeah. little things that yeah. actually like change change a lot for me. Yeah, I know that's uh, maybe a better question is what would you go back and tell yourself? And I think those are good things because even now in the stuff that we teach with young kids like. 11, 12, those elite guys, a lot of shoulder checking. Forwards, too. Even on forwards on the four check, if you're the first guy in on a puck, look around. Yeah. Because you may just, you know, and Crosby does this all the time. He just throws blind pucks, which you think are blind, but they're out to a guy's wide open. Because if you look back on the tape, he's looking around. He knows that guy's there. He sees the jersey. He knows it's, it's going. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. And for D, it's huge not to get hammered and know your outlets and know where your escapes are, you know? Yeah. Uh, and toes up ice is... The game's changed a lot in the last bunch of years, but how much, you know, forward, or, uh, D skate forward so much now? Yeah. You, know, you guys are you guys are squeezing players now with toes first. You guys are trying to keep toes up ice all the time. You're trying to jump in the play. Um, so those are those are really good things I think for young D even now to to work on. You know, but I mean growing up I was the same. You know, crossover all the time. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean. You're always backpedaling. You're always you know it's it's and yeah that's go at the puck and no angling hardly. It was just it was a different game. Yeah, right? definitely. Even the five years I've been in the league, how much has changed. Yeah, like you don't. You, like like you said, like as a D man, you're always trying to like skate forward, skate forward. So yeah. I, I think skating as a part of the game is it's a huge huge thing. You just try to be on your guy that you don't you try not to give him time at all. So yeah. you're always skating, you're always working. So it, I think just what it what it looks like now it is what 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 it, I think it's going to. I think skating just it, it's yeah. even, it's even bigger what it used to huge, be. Like, right? Yeah. If you if you can skate, you. You're gonna be okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It'll help. Yeah, it helps yeah, a ton. It'll, sure. I mean, yeah. It'll no, help. but you're right, man. If you can't skate, you're not gonna play. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, you'd see some guys like, how that guy get around the ice, and he's you know a tough guy, or maybe he's a good third line, fourth line guy, whatever it is. But you you have to be able to skate at every position now for sure. Um, what was it like after the draft, getting drafted by Pittsburgh? What was it like going back home? So going back to Finland, now all of a sudden you're a first round pick to, to to Pittsburgh. Was it was it a different acceptance there? As far as I know, you're a good guy. You played a lot of sports. I'm sure you had a ton of friends and buddies. But was it that it kind of put you on a little bit of a of a cloud a bit? As far as like, oh my god, like only Matt got drafted. You know, was it was it kind of was it was it a different atmosphere going back? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I got a lot of texts from my friends, and yeah, uh, yeah we talked about it. it's kind of a weird thing. I got I got a lot of those like, oh. I, like, remember the times we used to be in high school? Now you got drafted by that's awesome. Like, yeah. awesome. It made me like it makes you feel pretty good. Oh, like you actually awesome. done something good. Yeah, yeah. and uh, definitely you worked hard for it. So yeah. you get a you get a reward, reward yeah. for it. That, that's awesome. It, it feels awesome. But I don't think back home. I'm I moved I moved out so early. Yeah. So I, I think that that's a big. I never played for the the elite league team. Right. So I think those guys those guys are like the number one. Yeah. Face back home. So I, I, it's awesome to go back home. Just be you can. I can be Just one be a of dude. Guys. Yeah, yeah. I can be a guy. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't get recognized that much. Like, yeah. a little bit, yeah, for sure, but yeah. not, nothing crazy, which is right. awesome. No, that is that is really cool. Yeah, but it is cool, like, even for all your good buddies and stuff, that, man, our, our buddy Oli made it. Like, that's – or his draft. It's, it's got to be so cool for that whole – you know, your, your, your tight-knit group of family and friends and stuff, you know, to have a, a guy from, you know, a small country far away from North America to – get drafted so high and then actually play and, and get good opportunity to play. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I, th- I think the biggest thing, too, is just, just being the same guy. Like, I mean, yeah. nothing, nothing yeah. really changed. No, I, I can honestly, I can attest to that. Like, I remember the first time I ever met you. I think it was uh, it was the year that you got drafted or, yeah, the year that you started playing in London. I remember meeting with you and your agent, and I think it was Mark and Dale. And this yeah. has happened to me a bunch of times over the years where, a, you know, a hiring guy will come in and, and I'll meet with them just to talk to them about what I do, skill stuff and whatever. And this is obviously a while ago. And uh, I remember it was one of those things. Mark pulled me aside. He's like, "Listen, Blazer, um, this kid's a worker. Uh, he's a worker. You're gonna have to be. You know, you can't. He, he's he's gonna try to go all the time. So you just gotta pull back a little bit. <laughs> you know, Mark, right? Yeah. And then he said, uh, uh, he said, "Listen, like part of this deal getting him here is you. You know, we gotta do skill development every week." I'm like, "Okay." And I've heard this before. And like, you know, as well as I do, a lot of the guys like every week, and then the kids don't want to do it that much, or you know, they every whatever. Yeah. But I can honestly say, I think it was almost at least every week, if not sometimes twice a week, and that was on you, because you know me very well. I'm not a hand holder. I don't like, hey, Oli, we should go on the ice today, or hey, Oli, got to work out today. You were driving that bus all the time, but you, man, you're and the thing that I loved about it was. You wanted to do skill development every week. You wanted to work on your D stuff and shooting and skating and all that stuff. But what happened with that is you ended up pulling a bunch of other guys with you. Because now all of a sudden that group is like just you. And then by yeah, one point, remember, remember we were like, I can't, we're doing two groups. Like I'll keep a couple D with you if you're cool with it. And then we'll add a, and we end up splitting into two groups because there were seven, eight, nine guys that wanted to do it, which is awesome. It's a really good problem to have. But that was all in guys like you that kind of are those work guys that guys see like, man, that guy might play in the NHL. Like maybe I should be doing what he's doing, you know? And then they start 
and they get on that and they get on that same bus and it, it was amazing like and that was the first time i'd really experienced that as far as on an ohl team with all these guys that just like i want to be i want to start doing a little bit what he's doing yeah i think we had an awesome group of like yeah. younger younger guys Unreal. on the team you look you look at back like who, who do we have like there's there's a bunch of guys playing playing at nhl right yeah. now like look at anderson tyranny yeah. Bo, uh, athanasia like those guys, everybody wanted to do it and everybody yeah. wanted to get better so yeah. i think having that having a group of guys that want to do it together makes it makes first of all makes it more fun so you you, sure. you want to do it yeah. and then you like they push your, push yourself like yeah. push, push each other like that's, oh, no, that's for a huge sure. thing but yeah, yeah that, and I, I think for me like that was that was a huge thing that was definitely something like, i had to get better and i still got to get better at skating and i I've, I've taken big steps with it definitely it feels better and yeah got got better with but back in the back when i came here i i think even that one year it took a big step oh on, yeah on, on that and that even strength and stuff i think like you know you got stronger and, and you got more I, and you did change a lot like you got a lot better and just your skill stuff and even now i mean you're 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 one of those guys that's a pro like a legit pro just the way you just the way you 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 dress the ice you're always ready on time you're always you know what you want to work on you got certain areas you got to get better at and i think those are the things where guys are going to continue to get better right where you see it you, you play in the nhl i mean you see guys are just kind of, they're they're kind of they're they're riding it. They're good. They're very good, you know. But then you see guys like you play with a guy like Crosby, who is that guy ever stop? I mean, he's always trying to get better at everything, you know, and on all these little areas of his game, you know. And I think he does a good job of focusing on one or two things in the summer, one or two things here, one or two things there, and keeps kind of changing his game. And I think I think you're a lot like that. Yeah. I think, you know? and well, I think being around those guys, like yeah, it's just just seeing them what they do every day. It's just, yeah. Just trying to get better every yeah. day. Like every every time he's working on something. Like he's, and yeah. when he gets on the ice, he's challenging himself. Like he, first of all, he, I remember one practice last year. It was like it was like after a game or something. I think we lost a game, and I and going one on one against him. And he was on. He like he was just working me down. I was just going like power. He's seen him power. Yeah, yeah. So he's doing yeah. like power turn like three times, both times. I'm just sucking wind the whole time. <laughs> and then like after he comes. Yeah, I'm just, sorry, I'm going a little hard here. I just gotta, I just gotta punch myself a bit. We had a bad game last night. <laughs> so like, oh, okay, yeah, no worries. Like, I couldn't even speak at that point. I was sucking the wind so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're right, man. Yeah. It is contagious, and yeah. like, you want to. I'm sure, like, party is like, okay, let's relax here a little bit, Sid. But a party is like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to let him get by me. I want to, you know, I want to try to stop him. And yeah, I think that that challenge and that having those guys around you is amazing. You know, it's it's so good. Um, how often did uh, did Mark Hunter, Dale Hunter, come up to you and be like, "Hey, uh, Uli, uh, maybe maybe don't work out after this game." And uh, hey, you got he, hey, you got he needs some rest. How often did they come and tell you that? Yeah, we had a uh, we had we had that talk a couple of times. Let's just save, <laughs> save the legs a bit. For, I think uh, I think a couple is an understatement because yeah. I remember them being like, "Oh man, that guy never stops after games after practice. He wants to work out. Like they just want you to like settle down. We need you for the whole run." And you're like, "Yeah." The thing with that though, back home, like you don't. Here you play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. and then you get a good week of practice. Yeah. Then you work out the week, and then you play again. But back home, you play Tuesday, Thursday, yeah, Saturday or something. Right. Say, or you have two. Or so three you have games good gaps in between games, yeah, right? You, yeah. You do. Yeah. And you can. It's like we we were encouraged to actually work out after practice. Yeah. You do it on your own. So yeah. I, I think that's that's what stuck with me and just getting. Can you know your body a bit when you're tired? Is yeah. What do you do? The do yeah. more recovery stuff. Don't don't yeah. push yourself since you have a game tomorrow. So I think and, and that's it. Like you, you know your body, and and sometimes you just maybe need that little bit of a workout after a practice or after a game. And you know a lot of times other other people, especially coaches, are worried a little bit. You're young; they don't want you to break, right? Yeah. <laughs> like just relax. Yeah, you know? and I mean I know where it comes from. Yeah, like they just want sure. they just wanted me to be be better be better and just just have the legs for the, for the next day and just help trying to help me. So I think. I got a little better with that <laughs> throughout the two years. Definitely. Yeah, uh, we'll go quickly through. But on that second year that you came back here, you've been drafted, and then now you guys have a, another good run, like a back-to-back -back run. Like you said, you mentioned a bunch of guys that were on that team. You had a real good team. Um, what was it like that second year? What was different from the first year losing in the in the in the Memorial Cup to the second year winning? And you did it a little bit of a grindy way. We didn't, we didn't win. Oh, I lost two times. You did lose two times. Yeah, I lost two oh, times. Man, we that lost, sucks. We lost the final first. It's first too bad. I just totally rubbed yeah. salt. <laughs> yeah, you did. right there. <laughs> so you missed out on the on the on the next one. Then that's what it was. Yeah, we uh, three, that's right. We went to Shawinigan first year, then Saskatoon. and Shawinigan got knocked out early, and then they they ran the table when they were there, right? Yeah, yeah that's we right. ended up losing a second OT. That's right. Uh, that, yeah, that yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. Then the second year of Saskatoon, that that was uh, Halifax and Portland and playing. We. 
That's they right. You guys we were had, we got killed. All that. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but then the next year after that, they went. They hosted. I think was it? yeah. That's what it was. That was okay. The year. And then they won that year. But you were already in the NHL. Late. No, I don't think they won that year either. I'm pretty sure they did. Oh, well, well, no, we'll not, not, no, 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 not home. No, no, because that wasn't. No, no, no. That was yeah. the year. Uh, year they won was Marner Kachuk and. Uh, oh, you're right, and that uh, was on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Because yeah. there's been a bunch, man, in that in that so in I span. Up, I remember I ended up watching. Did you? Yeah, we ended up watching. That's right, Kachuk scored. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Um, now, so going through basically what we just messed up there with all of those work. Well, I messed up, I should say. Uh, so then the next, then the following year after that, now you're back at NHL camp, main camp, right? And uh, how does that all work out for you as far as just, uh, you know, now you're been there before, a little bit more experience. You're, you're kind of, you're kind of ready for, you know, basically because you got a, you got a development camp. Now you're going to rookie camp and then main camp, right? Mm-hmm. What was it like going in? That first kind of main camp now with like Crosby, Malk, and all these guys. As a young guy, you're 19 and kind of feeling your way around. How, what was that? What was that whole experience like? Yeah, it was. I was. I was a little nervous getting on the ice, I, of course, but I, I really didn't have too many expectations about it. Um, um, I, I really did. Like all I had was I either either stick, which was good, or yeah. I, I went back to London. We were hosting right. Men Cup, so that was good yeah, too. That's right. So I was like, I didn't have a bad situation, so I wasn't yeah. really. I wasn't really in a panic to make the team or anything. So, but at the same time, when you get on get on the ice with the with the actual NHL players, you look yeah. how like how fast they are, how good they yeah. are. Like it kind of makes you like, oh wow, like this, this crazy. is crazy. Yeah. This is a different league than yeah. I, than I used to play. Yeah, for sure. Like everybody's good. Yeah, it's not it's not only first or second line. Yeah, everybody's. Good. Yeah, there's not a big drop off there from yeah. the top six to the bottom six. Yeah, right? you think about it. It's it's a, every first line or second line. To put those best players yeah. from those leagues, that they're all they're all there. Yeah. So that's yeah. That that what he felt like it, but at the same time, when I think back, like I had having no expect expectations about it, like I, I think that worked in my favor. Like I, I just went out there and played, and yeah. like I kind of just mind my own business. You know, you, you know, I just did, I just did my own, did my own thing. Wasn't worrying about any anything else, and and uh, it kind of worked in my favor. And I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, it's amazing. And then you got an opportunity, right? Yeah. There was a couple injuries, and then you know, next you know, you're kind of in that starting lineup and. For starting roster, I should say, how did uh, how did you find out? Like, who who came to you and told you, "Hey, we might need you a little bit here," or "Hey, you're, hey, welcome to the NHL." Was there any, was there any moment like that where somebody came up and kind of gave you the news? Yeah, um, I think well, Bosmat was the coach at yeah. that point. So we had a we had like the team building camp at the end of the end of the off season or the or the training camp. We had it had it in uh, West Point, the military. Oh base yeah, yeah, and, yeah. So it was it was basically me or uh, Pouliot that was st- that was sticking around. We were still still around. We were just practicing, and uh, I, I can't remember when was. I think it might be my flight back that they pulled me over and told me like I'm I'm starting game one and cool and just just yeah. play. And I I remember like like I said like I still like I still had no expectations. Like I I was yeah. still just just riding the wave kind of yeah. So it's not even thinking about like I wasn't even thinking like oh god well, what's happening right now. I was just yeah. I was just doing it. I was yeah. just in the moment at that point. Uh, and um, because at that point you're not sure if you're gonna be there for the whole year or maybe for the first ten games yeah. and go back. Right. It's kind of a little bit up in the air at the beginning, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, then I ended up playing really good. Like in the nine games, I ended up playing good. I ended up getting more and more, more and more ice time. Yeah. Uh, I was always playing a third pair and. And uh, after a nine nine game, and uh, I remember practice, they pulled me in and said, like I knew, like I didn't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, like, right. I could have been any any way. Like yeah. I, and really, again, like I I had I had a lot of fun and uh, yeah, and playing up there. But like yeah. I I really didn't. It wouldn't bother me if they sent me down yeah, back, right. back down. I'd be back in London. Yeah, because we still had we had an awesome team. It was an awesome opportunity to win the yeah. win the Mem Cup again. Yeah, so so it didn't didn't matter. Yeah, uh, but I ended up sticking, and uh, kind of came as a surprise to me. Like I, yeah. I obviously knew I was I was playing well at that point, but I didn't think there's so many other factors going right. into it, and I didn't think. Like I, I really had no no idea that they wanted me to stick. I right. thought I thought I'm going back. Yeah, it, it was awesome, and I ended up still the first first seasons ended up going pretty, pretty easy. Like I still like I remember just game by game. Like I was like. Didn't didn't know what was happening. I I didn't know the grind. They they, they yeah. talked about what are these guys talking about right. the grind? Right. Like how long the season is. Obviously, it hit me at some point. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, like I just had, like I had no game. idea because yeah. I never experienced it before. Yeah. You're like just I, showing up and yeah. playing. Yeah. Now when you when you start a season, you know you're gonna like that. Yeah. That grind 
moment's going to hit at some point. Yeah, right, right. So, no, for sure. What was the phone call like home when you told your mom and you know told your family, like, hey, I uh, they're out, they asked me to stay. Like, was it? Uh, Jake, do you remember that phone call at all? Was it kind of cool to like say, I'm actually going to be an NHL or like I'm I'm. I can't. I can't remember. No, right? uh, yeah. Huh? Okay, then what was yeah. it like to get your first paycheck? Was that pretty good? Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty sweet for sure. Uh, and then, so, I mean, obviously amazing. You're, you're a young guy playing in the NHL, which is unreal. And um, that year, was it that year as well that you got named to the Olympic team for Finland? Was it the same year as your first year in the NHL? Yeah, yeah, that was the same year. Which is kind of crazy, right, at 19? Like, uh, I mean, obviously you had a year in the NHL, which is which is amazing. Kind of gives you, a, you know, a little bit more a status, I guess, right? But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you're like, how old, was, how old was the oldest guy in the Olympic team have been? It was Solani at that point. Right. He was 42. Or yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're 19, 20. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it could be your dad. There, yeah. you, go, there you go. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, about that, like, I, again, like, I had, I had, I didn't even pay attention about it. Like, yeah. it almost, like, felt like I didn't know there was Olympics that year. And it was somewhere around, like, two months before when they started making calls, like, yeah, like, we might be in, like, we're, we're deciding. And like, yeah. they started, we started looking, like, there wasn't many NHL defensemen Finland had. Yeah. Like we had Timon and Salo, and they were they were yeah. the probably the last of the like the older older generations we had. Yeah. And then we had Watanen and me. Yeah. That that was pretty much. And uh, I I started looking like oh oh god I might like <laughs> I might be playing. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> that 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 was actually the yeah. thing. I'm like oh god like. <laughs> well, I mean, at least like in the NHL, not at least, but in the NHL, you're kind of you're playing a lot of games. It's a uh, you're on a big stage, but it's a very it's a very large stage as far as there's you know, a lot of teams, there's a lot of games. It's not, a, but you now all of a sudden are like representing your country at the Olympics. It's like a big microscope on that. So as a 19 yeah. year old, already being probably a little bit not overwhelmed, but just like in, on cloud nine about playing in the NHL all year, now all of a sudden, man, you might be representing your country for the Olympics, which is I mean I can't yeah, imagine. I mean, right? I mean you think about it like. Olympics are bigger than it's actually huge. winning Stanley Cup back home. Yeah. That was, that was the, that's the biggest thing in Finland, what yeah. they think of. It. It's televised everywhere. Like yeah. Everybody's watching. The whole country's watching it. Yeah. It's not like you can see Stanley Cup is coming at night, so people yeah. don't really wake up for it. Like, yeah. Obviously, everybody knows what it is, and it's yeah, a huge yeah. thing to win it. Yeah. But at the same time, Olympics every fourth year, like that's that's the main thing yeah. in Finland. And yeah. growing up, like we always... When we play the pickup hockey games, like growing off, we wanted to be like the team fan of yeah. beating somebody else. So yeah, that's, yeah, cool. It was it was a cool moment. Yeah, oh for sure. And then uh, you guys won bronze that year, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, what was that like going back home with a with, with a bronze medal? You know, obviously the whole year in the NHL, which is amazing. I'm sure that was you know a big big deal in itself. But then also, now you basically won a medal for in ho- ice hockey with with team like with Finland. What was that? What was that whole? process like coming back to to your country i'm sure you guys had some events going on and things like that that you were probably a part of was it uh was it a pretty cool experience as as a as a countryman well we end up right? going right to uh back to pittsburgh we yeah but I, mean, I was talking about maybe uh, more in the yeah, summer yeah, like did, was there stuff going on at all of, because of that win not really it was just not, done not really it, <laughs> it was done. just done i think i think it's more of myself like I, again like I, that that olympics went yeah it just went like yeah. it just everything just went that year yeah. then after a year i had when I finally had some time, I started thinking back, like I'm like, oh god, like that was it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. cool. Like it's been awesome. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's it's so cool. Um, and then how then you know the next year is a little bit more. It's got it's got a little bit a little bit more turmoil in as far as a little bit of injury and then and then obviously being diagnosed, right? Yeah. So uh, diagnosed with thyroid cancer, correct? Yeah. And now what was what what's that news like when you get that? I mean, obviously you're a young guy. Not last thing on your mind is anything bad you're just you know you're healthy you're athletic you're you're fit you know was there any kind of signs that you felt something was off a little bit and i need to should probably get checked out or not really no i no i i felt normal and i then, like i had no idea i had anything really going on and it's just uh we had the preseason physicals they, mm-hmm. they all test and checked out the place and they found a find a lump in my throat and end up doing a biopsy of it and it's uh they it just came to call like okay like you uh you got a you got a cancer i think like your thyroid uh, no a way surgery on it and really for me like it wasn't like i, I obviously at that point i kind of freaked out and I, I asked yeah. a lot of questions and then i called a lot of people and we, we talked about it they said it's it's not not the biggest thing but then after that i'm like oh like well, i'm gonna explain it to my like when I call my parents and yeah. my, my brother, like, yeah. they're going to freak out. Yeah. Like, uh, how am I going to do that? <laughs> like, and I actually, first call wasn't, wasn't my parents either. Like, I'm no. like, I called my, uh, I called my agent 
And then I called call my Bella family. I'm like, like how, how am I going to call my parents? Like, yeah. what, what, what do I say? Yeah. Like, that's, uh, that yeah, was like, I really at that point, like I, I got over it. I knew I'm going to well, you knew that, be fine. You knew, you knew that's something yeah. that, that, that can be treated and that can yeah. be dealt with, right? Yeah. I'm going to be fine. So, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, Yeah. when you got over that first, first scare, like, it was, it was okay. Like yeah. It, it really wasn't that bad. Yeah. Just explaining to everybody else, but it was. It was cancer is kind of a. I almost thought cancer would be a wrong word for it because it wasn't. Yeah. Right. Other people with cancer go through way more. Yeah. Like I, yeah, yeah, I really. For sure. yeah. I went through one surgery. I'm I'm taking uh, I'm taking like pills for the rest of my life yeah. for it. But like yeah. nothing really else changed. Yeah. No, no, for sure. And there's so many layers or different levels of cancer, obviously, right? But anytime that word is said. It's like right away, you know, you kind of, it's got to be so scary at that, yeah. that age, right? Obviously. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the yeah. thing. I think and it's more of the word you got scared on. For that sure. They actually explain what it is. Like, it yeah. wasn't really that bad. And for you, I mean, being a professional athlete, probably kind of lucky that you had your physicals at that time and that they did catch it, you know, at that time. Because, and I don't know, but I, is it something that if it lingered for the whole season and you didn't really notice it, would it, would it have been something that, that potentially could have got worse? Or was it something that was probably just going to stay the same? And Yeah, I, that's that's why we wanted to uh, do the surgery right away yeah. and get it out. Um, yeah. Because we could have waited until the end of the season, but you never know, never if, know it, yeah. if it gets worse. So yeah. I, I think definitely, definitely being lucky that we have the physicals every year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if we didn't, it could have been worse. Yeah, I know, for sure, for sure. Um, and then, I mean, it was a quick turnaround, right? You ended up playing almost right up till surgery, hide your surgery, and then we're playing a couple weeks after that again and kind of right back into it, right? Yeah, yeah, it didn't take long. I think it took, they said four weeks, but I think they just wanted to say four weeks so it didn't, wouldn't look bad if I actually yeah. took longer than it should. If they said sure. two weeks and I took three weeks, oh, yeah. something's wrong with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. The surgery went fine. Everything yeah. went fine. There wasn't Good. really too much risk to it yeah. either. So I ended up coming back, I think, two and a half, three weeks. Or yeah, so. no, that's great. And that, um, how much different was that second year to the first year? Just as far as, I mean, uh, you know, with those injuries and illnesses and cancer aside, but just coming into camp, um, just more confident. Like, how did you feel coming into the second year of camp? Now you played a year at the NHL, mm. a little bit more swagger to you probably, but also just probably a little more confident, know the process, you know, and, and was, it, was it a lot different mindset coming in that second year than it was the first year? Um, yeah, yeah, a little bit for sure. Um, still still kind of... Still kind of new, new to it. Like I obviously had one year yeah. under my belt, so that kind of knew, knew what the process is. And like like you said, it was a, it was a little bit easier. But at the same time, I think just just the hunger to get better and having getting more ice time. I think yeah, that, that was a huge thing. Just competing for your for your spot there. Yeah, and um, almost putting more expectation on yourself, right? Like you yeah, want to be better than you were there before, right? That yeah. that's a big thing. A big yeah. thing on it. You definitely wanna wanna get better every year. And yeah, you, you definitely put more expectation when you see what it's like. Yeah, no, for sure. And then that uh, was it. Uh, so that that this is your third year. So let's say so you're going into your third year now. So the third year was your basically your your first cup, right? Mm-hmm. Now that's pretty young in a in a in a pro career to get to the, the finals first of all, and then let alone you know win win a cup. Now going through that season, when you look back on a little bit on that first Stanley Cup, um, did you kind of sense something different with that team? Do you kind of sense? You know, I know during the season, you just go through the season, get a bunch of guys, everyone gets along, everyone doesn't get along, it doesn't matter. But now when you look back on it, you're like, oh man, you know, there was some, there was some pretty cool moments or there was, you know, was there something, was there anything different about that team as far as just the tightness of them or, you know, or just the boys all went out together, the, the road trips were amazing or anything that kind of clicked the guys together that, oh man, we, we might be able to do something here. Well, yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun, but we didn't start off the season well. Like, yeah. I mean, we were horrible. Yeah, that's I right. I think we were somewhere about, or, Around 500, maybe under 500. Yeah. We're out of playoffs, and uh, was it December or January? Uh, we got the new coach, Sully came in, and just kind of changed, right, yeah. changed the tone. I think yeah. at the same time, it's kind of wake up call. Um, it, it was almost like everybody's like, "God, like we get we got to start doing something. We're way better. We way better what we've been playing." Yeah. And just different, different, different voices uh, like behind you on the on the bench, are kind of. And uh, and the way he he does things, it's uh, I th- I think it just woke up everybody. And after that, like it took it took two two weeks or so to get yeah like that kind of game going. But after that, we were just kind of flying. It yeah. Just, yeah. It just felt like every game, every game, it doesn't matter who we played against, we knew we we're gonna win it. Yeah. Well, we obviously we didn't always win Not it, but we had that yeah. confidence, the yeah. swagger in us that it's it's fun when you play on teams where you're down by two in the third. And like we got this, don't worry about yeah, it. Let's like, just wait. It, like, yeah. It's just a different feeling. <laughs> it's it awesome. Like, yeah. And you have you have four lines. It didn't matter who's yeah. like four line. We had, we had Collie in there. We had yeah. guys that actually could. 
Like they they scored a, bit, a lot yeah. of goals for us and yeah. huge goals for us. And for we, sure. we had three deep pair we could play. Like it just yeah, it just felt like wave after wave. We just kept com- kept coming and yeah. it just it almost it wasn't overconfidence though. Like Not it just always. felt like it yeah. just felt like every game we went into it didn't matter what was the situation we felt like yeah. we had a chance to win it someone was going to step up right which is yeah. huge and with with the, with the coaching change what, were, what was the biggest difference was it just more keeping guys accountable or uh kind of buying into the process and and being you know because sometimes i think when 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 you're with the same coach for a while or they have their ways of doing it guys get lax guys get comfortable maybe guys can cut corners a little bit and things like that was it something along the lines of that where you just kind of let exactly you said new voice but he also was a little bit more accountable on guys, a little bit more, you know, detail oriented on, on certain things. Is that kind of what got things shifted? Or do you think it was just something where guys, guys, cause you guys have a strong group of guys and yeah. looked at each other and said, man, like we are so shitty right now. We're way better than this. And let's, this is embarrassing. You know, what was it more of the coaching change? Or was it more a combination of that? And the guy saying, Hey, let's, let's wake up here. I, I think it's both ways, yeah. but I, I think definitely Sully, like you said, brought a lot of accountability to the room. Um, I mean, everybody's had to do their job. Like yeah. It, it just, there wasn't nobody who who couldn't do it and got, get away away with it. Yeah, like you you had to do it. And, yeah, and uh, and you ha- you had to play hard. You had to compete, or he he'd uh, he'd tell you tell you to, and he wouldn't tell you the <laughs> yeah. nice way. And, and yeah, yeah. that's that's what he's good at. Like he, yeah. he can he can definitely say it straight to you. It didn't, yeah. didn't matter who you were. Yeah, and that, I think that's so important, especially for young kids, older guys, pros, is uh, kind of almost embracing what you are. So if you're a shutdown defenseman, then be a good shutdown defenseman, right? You can always morph into a little bit more of a hybrid or whatever down the road, but you know, even if you're a good third-line guy who kills penalties, well, be a good third-line guy that kills penalties. Don't try to compete with Sidney Crosby for the scoring race, right? But if you're Sidney Crosby, what's your job? You score. Yeah. You got to put up points. You got to help us out on the power play, right? And I think having a guy that's that's pushing those buttons and keeping those guys accountable and maybe helping them stay in their lane a little bit is probably a, a huge thing to help teams have success for long runs like that. Yeah, for sure. Like everybody has their job, and you can't. All you have to Gino, you got Tanger, you got Phil. Like you yeah. got awesome players. Like they're gonna play big minutes, and they should. They're yeah. they're, they're the best players totally. in the league. Yeah, they, they should. And then you got then you got guys, but it doesn't matter. Like. If there if there's guys playing like fourteen less or less minutes, like they you need those as much as you need the other guys because yeah. those those guys make the difference too. Yeah, like you might be able to match up against first and second line, but if you have third and fourth line, that can can come against you. Like for that's, sure, that's pretty yeah. hard. Yeah, and no, all that's yeah, definitely a good point. Um, and then going on that run and, and playoffs and everything like that, what was it like hoisting the Stanley Cup? Like, what was that like? I know it's a grind and you know a long playoff run and seasons long and then playoffs are long and you know, but what was that like? You know, kind of when you guys finally won it and then you know, what's it like being the you know a Stanley Cup champ? It's kind of empty, empty <laughs> feeling. <laughs> it, it's almost like you you keep showing up to the rank every day and just having fun and like kind of working hard and. Then suddenly you, you've done it, and it, it's like it's done, and it's you over. Kind of like, like <laughs> yeah. what, what now? Right, right. Almost that kind of. It, yeah. It, it's it's just like you got no, you got really nothing to say. I, I remember that from the from the first one. It, it was so much fun just playing those games. Yeah. And just showing up to rank. Like like I said, like that that journey, that play, those playoffs. Like that was those were probably one of the best times of my life. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. Just being done, obviously you're relieved and you yeah. you you're enjoying it. But it took it took a while to actually start enjoying it. It's just kind of a yeah. It's just kind of you, you breathe out and you're like, oh. Like, well, whatever. you're on such a routine too, right? Like you've got your game day stuff. You're you're playing every second night for the most part, or third night max. So you, you're in such a routine, such a schedule, travel, all this stuff, and then all of a sudden it's you got nothing. Yeah, it's you like got you quiet, got nothing. Right? Yeah, yeah. not quiet partying, but you got you got no you got no routine anymore, which Ex- is exactly. Yeah, I, I could totally see that. It, that's really interesting because I've never heard that before. You know, everyone's like, "Oh, it's amazing, it's the best feeling," but it's it, a, it is after like no, no, it, for took, sure, it took for a while. Sure, but that like, makes total sense. But that's but that's a really cool insight on it because people don't think of that. Like, yeah. you've just went through two months of grinding, like the hardest hockey to be played, and a you know a busy schedule, and then all of a sudden it's like, Phew. yeah gone it which is yeah super like no more alarm clocks no more you don't have to worry about going to meetings you don't have to look at video <laughs> anymore right it's like wow yeah i'm sure some guys are like but it's almost like it's almost like a at the same time as it's so much fun like you get like so much joy out of it yeah, almost yeah. Like, almost like a letdown you're like you're not seeing the 
you're not showing up the ring. The same guys are not right. showing up the ring. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You were having so much fun, yeah. fun with it. Yeah. Now you got to wait for next another, year. Yeah, yeah, next year. Which again brings us to our sec- the, the next year, which is crazy that you end up going back to back. Like that's unbelievable. Now, do you see a lot of differences between the first year and the second year with the team? Like, do you see a lot of? And now Sully's so got the team. He's you know he's obviously that you guys have won, which is amazing. But when at the start of the year was it was it as you know back to work boys right away, or was there a little bit of a you know you talk about the the Stanley Cup hangover? Was there a little bit of a gray period there where you guys were just kind of feeling your way around a little bit, or was it boys we're doing this again, man? We are doing this again. And, and I can't remember how we started the second year. Uh, how how did we do? But I, I remember we, we talked a lot about that nobody's really done it. Like there's. Obviously, yeah. Detroit did it last time. Yeah, but back to back, like how much, how much guys wanted it. Everybody yeah. wanted it, and, yeah. and just it was just a feeling around group, around the group. But it wasn't easy. I, I remember second year wasn't definitely didn't feel like first year almost felt like just went. Yeah, it's just like we just kept playing so good every game. It's like there was games like we were just like like you like we talked about like you. Would be down two goals. You knew you were coming yeah, back. Yeah. You, had, you you knew you had yeah. a chance to come back. Like second year, there was there was ups and downs a lot. Like it wasn't didn't go like that. Like yeah. it was it was a lot more grind than than right. the first year was. Yeah, yeah. And then what, what, was the playoff run just as good as the first year? As far as just, I mean, you had a good all your crew guys or your um, your crew of kind of your key guys were basically a lot of the same guys. Yeah. So was it just as fun that second year as far as the camaraderie and the joking and the traveling and you know enjoying the process of going through the playoffs or was it a little bit different that second year? Yeah, it was the same, same. thing. It was fun yeah. again, but yeah. but like I said, like the it almost felt like there was games like we just looked like a different team and then yeah. we showed up again. And that's yeah. and I, I think if you look back at the results or whatever, like we ended up losing the games about five, yeah. five one, five nothing. Yeah. I can't remember the exact scores, yeah. but then we ended up and are killing yeah. the other team too. So it's like it's like it wasn't as c- consistent as we used to be. But playoff time was, was just as yeah. much fun. It oh, didn't, for sure. didn't matter. It's just yeah. so much fun just being being around, and being part of something that you know it's gonna be good. Yeah. No, oh, that's cool. And what were your uh, what were your Stanley Cup parties like? As far as yeah, obviously you've had two now. Bringing them back, you know, I'm, you, I'm assuming you brought them back to Finland, right? Yeah. And what was that like? Was it uh, was it was it you know was it everything that everything that you kind of thought it was gonna be? And you know, and 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 what did you do with it? Did you bring it back to you know club stuff and things like that, or? Yeah, first year I, uh, it, because it's never been in uh, my home city. No way. Yeah, that was that was the first time. So we cool. had a, I went I went through the, uh, we had like a big party. I went through the, first of all I went through the junior teams, yeah. like all the junior teams from, that that city. Like we had three different cool different uh, teams that yeah. had their junior program. So the kids from yeah. whatever age that came in, yeah, to take pictures took. Took a long time, but I thought it was worth it. I got a lot out of it. Yeah. Too. A lot of joy to see these kids to see. Yeah, it's cool. See the hand, like see that the Stanley Cup yeah. right there. I kind of it brings to like That's everyday amazing, life and man. everyday yeah. thinking that oh god, like this this guy's from Uvascula too. Like I might I might be able to make yeah. it. Like I think that'd be a big pretty big thing. So yeah. that was a the thing. Then we had then we had like of a city city did a little event like the stage and all. That was that was a cool. That's thing. cool. And yeah. I got it for two nights actually. So we had a first night. We had a party with uh, just close friends, like yeah. 15, 15, 20 people, yeah. just close friends. And we had a party. And next day, next morning, I had to wake up and go to my old elementary school, <laughs> yeah. high, high school. Yeah, right? like the high. I'm, I'm not elementary school for grade seven and nine. So I had three okay. s- three school visits. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Three school visits. Then I'm going children's hospital and oh, wow. stuff like that and it wasn't an easy morning but i yeah. definitely got through it yeah and, little, uh, little. but it was it was fun that was fun too was just cool. that, how, how how much fun those kids were having i yeah. think that was awesome even the even the older kids you know the teenagers yeah like, yeah the cool ones right? yeah like, oh, they, were, okay. they were they were enjoying That's it too awesome. like yeah. I, that yeah and it, it was great two days i had the first time and then obviously had the bigger party with all all my friends and from yeah. back in the days and Stuff so it was it was awesome awesome second time I kind of just took it easy I, a little uh, lower key yeah, yeah. I had it I had it, had it for one night and one morning so we had a we had the same kind of similar kind of party same people yeah. same people so, oh that's cool and the brunch the next morning with the culture closer group of guys yeah that's awesome I had a chance obviously this year the, the sorry about that but the Washington Capitals on the cup uh, this year but um and I had, I had an opportunity at development camp to uh, to to spend a little bit of time at the Stanley Cup and. 
I never realized how important the Stanley Cup was to individuals until I was there at development camp. And, you know, you, you meet that trainer that's from D.C. that's been trained and been there for 20 years. And the first time, you know, and it's just the, how the impact that cup had on the people involved, not necessarily the players, which I know it's a big thing for the players too, but just the all that supporting cast that have been there for 15, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, even longer. And they and they they're gonna get a ring out of this. They're gonna get their day with the cup. It was unbelievable, man. I really gained a whole I love watching the Stanley Cup finals. I love watching the playoffs. I love watching them, you know, you guys win. I love watching any team win. I just think it's such a cool thing. Any championship, right? Mm -hmm. But I really gained a new appreciation for the Stanley Cup and and just the what kind of value it holds with people, you know. And and even watching fans interact with the cup was amazing. It was I was really floored. I it was I was something I've seen the cup before and I was very, you know, I love it. It's it's amazing, but being a part of Washington, working for them and stuff, and then knowing these guys and that have you know that have put that time in, I was like, man, it just yeah, it think, think, raised that level for me. You think about it, like they how much work and how it's crazy, how much hard work it is yeah. for for these guys to put yeah. in. It's 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 huge. Yeah, it's huge for them. Like they're they're part of the team as as much we are as players. Oh, and for sure. And the time like they, they put almost, in, right? Yeah, they almost put. I I'm I'm pretty like. Okay, I'm 100 percent sure they put up more time than we do actually at the rink. 100 percent, 100 percent. Now when yeah. I think of it, yeah, 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 yeah for sure. It, it's crazy. Yeah. We can't even think of how much work these guys put in. Oh man, it's funny when I talk to young pros that are going on to play. I always tell them like, I always tell them when you guys when you're on a pro team, whether it's doesn't matter where it is, junior doesn't matter, but respect the trainers, respect the equipment guys. Those are the cogs, man. They're the guy. Well, first of all, if you break lace and he doesn't like you, he's not going to give you good lace, right? <laughs> but all that stuff, but just respect those guys. You know what I mean? If you're playing pro tip mode a little bit, like th those guys are exactly, like you said, they spend countless hours, and especially as you get to the AHL, NHL, like you don't touch your equipment. They do everything for you. So think of just even that, like yeah. all that, you know, they're, they're unbelievable. Those, those guys and girls that do yeah, those jobs. Yeah, think about and, how crazy I am about my gear, my sticks, and, right. sticks and skates. Like uh, not only that, they have that, to be, perfect oh, yeah, and yeah. They, they they are almost per like almost every day they're <laughs> yeah. perfect and like you just kind of yeah just kind of remind yourself how good these guys are and how yeah, much they work sure. just to make sure like you have a perfect not only you the other 22 players yeah have, have right perfect so, yeah and i mean for guys like you like think of how heavy your bag is after you sweat out about 20 liters of water <laughs> in the sweat and that yeah, after yeah. game. I, 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 didn't, I don't want to smell it <laughs> no. Uh, no this has been awesome man and i'll finish up just with a couple quick questions but if you if you were to talk to a young kid right now let's say 14 15 16 a little defender or a big defenseman doesn't matter uh who's tracking who's you know a, a good player maybe he's a house player doesn't matter but what are what are a couple of things that you tell him hey you know what let's just talk let's just say skill for now but these are the, you know, these are, if you're going to work on any skills at all, these are two or three things I'd recommend that you keep kind of focusing on. Is there anything that stands out? I know you mentioned skating, which I think is yeah. obviously a big one, but just in general, things like anything, picking up passes, uh, shooting the puck hard, um, you know, being, being, keeping your head up. But is there anything that kind well, of stands out at you that, that are big things? Maybe I stole all your answers. <laughs> I think, there, but. Yeah, I think you just said it. Yeah. Uh, well, skating is, skating yeah. is definitely a huge yeah. thing. But I think for, for D-Man, for sure, like just having your head up. Yeah. Knowing how to handle the puck when you when you have your head up the whole time, you don't have to look at the puck. I think that's that's such a big thing. You get, you look at Leechstrom, look, look at his clips when he, when he uses how, how he shoots it. Like he doesn't. First of all, he doesn't overhandle it. He always just, he just gets it and he, he, it's in a bright spot for him to pass or shoot it. Yeah. And every time he shoots it, he just keeps his head up the whole yeah. time. He never he never looks at puck. He just picks the. He can see the lanes and he can yeah. see where to pass it, where to yeah. shoot it. So. I think those are those are pretty big things. Yeah, and th that's a good point, man. And D, a lot of young D men don't. They just bury their head and fire it, right? And getting them to work on keeping their head up, I think, is a is is a huge thing for sure. Um, your your kind of routine, like you're you're a, you're a, like like I was saying earlier, you're a pro. You you work out, you skate, you do all that stuff. What other stuff do you do aside from like the you know, let's say I was Captain Obvious, like oh you play hockey, so I'm sure you skate and you work out. But are there other things that you do aside from that, like yoga or? Pilates or anything like that that you that you like to do cycling whatever it doesn't matter but anything that you like to do kind of away from the rink that's a little bit different but that helps that you you know mentally for you it's like I'm going for a run this is gonna help me hockey wise but you know it could be reading a book doesn't matter but is there anything yeah. that you do away from the rink that's different than you know, kind of the normal kind of hockey stuff well just I do I do a lot of rolling and stretching I yeah. think that that's a big thing just taking care of your body um, yeah and uh, summertime I once a week I do like longer longer cardio thing just just yeah. low, lower heart rate it's usually a weekend just kind of it's almost almost like a relaxing relaxing thing too i put my roller blades on or yeah. i go for a little jog or I ride, yeah. ride a bike a little bit just get get away from it yeah away from it but it might be also it might be playing tennis or just playing 
bad I like badminton a lot too. Yeah. Like all soccer, if you get a good like good games going on. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. It's, I think it does bring a condition was like cardio was like low cardio. I think that's that's a huge thing for it too. But at the same time it kinda of gets your head away from the hockey. Yeah, for sure. Which I mean you need that, right? Yeah. You definitely need that. Um and then I guess uh one last thing, I mean, obviously you're you like golf too, but how important is it to kind of get together with your buddies as well and just kind of like you said, get your mind off of hockey, maybe it's video games or it's going out to play pool or it's whatever it is, right? But uh, you know, how how important is it to, for you to come back to London sometimes and, and you've got a good group of guys here that you like to hang with and stuff, going back home to Finland, you got a bunch of buddies there. But how important is that part for you too, just friends, family and kind of getting away and, and you know, being able to shut down and, and hang out with those kind of people as well? Yeah, I, I think it's huge. I think that just kind of recharge your batteries. Like you, and then you want next day you can do you can do the workouts again, and then go hang out with your buddies. You kind of balance it out. You, yeah, a lot of summer times, a lot of uh, individual training. So I mean, you do you do a lot of stuff on your own. Um, so I think coming here when you have a group of guys you can work work out with, uh, so that has the same goal. I think that that helps a lot. It makes it. Makes it a little, gives you a little boost, and makes you makes it a little, little more interesting. Uh, yeah. And uh, away, away from hockey, working out, I, I think that's a huge thing. Just, just relaxing and getting your mind off of it. I, I, I find it, I find it make a huge difference the next morning you wake up. No, oh, it's good, man. Well, it's all, listen, buddy, I really appreciate you stopping by. You know, we, I took a little bit of time today, but it was, uh, it was great, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, all buddy. Right. That was awesome, man.